What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Oceania AI only battle. We will continue where we left off. There was still a few wars, particularly this Motu Wagi battle um, going on. We'll see how that pans out. Hopefully it gets interesting. And we're also going to hit turn 250, which is pretty important as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, we won't do the info addicts necessarily because I skipped a few turns, if you remember, before the last one. And we don't, so really, turn 200 was not all that long ago in episodes. And at the moment, it's, it's kind of exciting. It's definitely a weird game. There's just a lot of sieves still competing. Um, I thought this would have been more of a, a snowball type of game, but there is definitely a few sieves still competing. Even for the lead, it's kind of unclear without the Info Addicts, who's doing well. Um, New South Wales leading a lot of the major characteristics for a domination sort of victory, but not in terms of winning through the info addicts. I think Brunei in particular will be winning quite a few as well, which puts them kind of, you know, different ways of winning, if that makes sense. And the Wagi have now risen up. I think they were the last autocracy sieve, so they're now all following order as well. That will hurt them a little bit. Two turns of no production and science and other things in the middle of a war can be pretty painful. Maybe give Motu a good couple of turns here to do some damage and not see the stuff being instantly replaced. We'll see. Not ideal, I'd imagine, having a revolution mid-war. But there you go. Maybe maybe that's what, maybe, you know, all the soldiers were out and, you know, they just... Rebels just walked into the... Whatever they have, presidential palace. Or if they were order, what, what, what do they have? I don't know. Some sort of compound. <laughs> and they've, they've just walked in there and replaced them. And now they're autocratic, so now they probably do have a palace. You know, just working their way up. <laughs> there is now just just the Maori, just freedom remaining in the Maori New Zealand. They have anti-air guns. I don't think any plane. No one's got modern. Actually, maybe some civs have bombers and fighters, but certainly not that could reach the Maori. So that is quite funny. <laughs> They've probably never even seen a plane other than their own. So to have anti-air guns, pretty well prepared. I mean. Pretty good move, but maybe there's some better investments they could be making. I mean, if you bought, like, if you made a really good navy, you could just kill the aircraft carriers and not worry about the planes. You know, and obviously if you can sink one carrier with, like, four planes on it, that, that's even better. And especially out here, because if it's, if it's over here, they can't retreat. Like, they, they've got nowhere else to fly. So, but there you go. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's no one really here attacking them. So, <laughs> it's all red irrelevant. I think they're fighting some of these New South Wales boats. But that's about it. They're, they're not really doing much else. The Maori now joins against Motu. Not necessarily going to change this war. But again, there's still fighting going on. Still Wagi using cannons. I, I don't know what, what the pref Artillery does not require any strategic resources, so I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> They've not made that upgrade. Maybe it's money, but most of the civs that are a big in this world do have a lot of money so that's again surprising they do have an artillery here so hopefully they'll get going a bit better in the future um, Kulin no sorry not Kulin well Kulin and Murray still here they've survived Banuba <laughs> not really retaliating now they are on, definitely on the back foot though now and maybe maybe going to come under some pressure in the near future the Murray, who of course started all of this with their brave attack on their own. <laughs> They've had a lot of support since, but at the time they were on their own. Kulin doing their thing. What else have we got? New South Wales with a settler. Nagarin Jerry. See, it just flows off the tongue now. It took some time. Which episode is this? Is this 10? 9? 10? 10, I think. So there you go, 10. 10 episodes, that's, that's how, much it, how much time it takes, 10 days to to get your vocabulary, no, not vocabulary, well, it's part of my vocabulary now, but <laughs> pronunciation up to scratch, sorry about that, but we're, we're there now, that was, I don't know what it was with that one, just, I think it's like there's just, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if there's any other words with a D and a J, maybe it's just, it's an unnatural sort of sound, especially with it like a, the N and you know, just the bit that's before it. It's kind of, a, it's like a mix of sy syllables that are not in any other word. <laughs> Maybe that explains it. Apart from like Jerry. It's not like Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Is it Ben and Jerry? Yeah. Tom and Jerry is the cat and the 
mouse. Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> Get that one right. There we go. I was going to say, did Lao always have this? But yeah, they have. That was just me. Again, being silly. Vietnam. Yeah, I'm, this isn't going to work. I mean, I think Burma can actually, as soon as they move into these tiles, Burma can shoot over the mountain with the city bombardment. And can I, I think artillery might be able, it's, it confused me what you can and can't shoot over. So I'm going to say they can, but <laughs> maybe it can, maybe it can't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They haven't made any progress for a very long time. So either way, good to see archaeologist spam is back. You know, we haven't seen that for quite a while, but. It is weird, the sieves, I, I'm, I'm not aware, I don't know if the game's still being updated in li little ways or not, probably not, it's like 11 years old now, 12 years old, the original anyway, um, so I'm going to, it's weird, sometimes we have the games where the sieves are very passive, not sure this is one of them, I think the sea has probably, there's been so much ocean has probably not helped in this one, but... Um, yeah, sometimes we have those weird games where the AI is incredibly passive, they will never attack, or hardly will attack, sometimes they're mega aggressive, you know, and I don't seem to have changed anything to cause that. Sometimes we get archaeologist spam, more recently we haven't, so it is weird that, that, that Burma has opted for so many. Um, I mean, they've gone for a lot, because Lao do not, you know, Lao have like one or two. But, you know, one or two is normal, that's what you need to go and sort all the things out. Some of these other sieves have a couple. Again, Vietnam has, okay, maybe a bit more than a couple, maybe eight there, but not as many <laughs> relative to Burma, and especially since they're not really, there can't be that many antiquity sites within your territory. Surely there's something more useful. I think what it might be for Burma, actually, is, and maybe other sieves in the past that I've been a bit harsh on, I, I don't know if archaeologists cost money, Per turn, or they're, if they're the cheapest unit, but obviously if they have two good cities and that's it, they probably have every building in those cities, and especially all the free stuff, they're probably running out of money, and I'm guessing maybe archaeologists are free, or at least much cheaper than a military unit, so, you know, they're building those. I don't know if the AI ever reverts to, you know, how you can set it to build gold or build science, I don't know if they would do that, so maybe that's constricting them a little bit. But either way, oh, Banuba has sent some frigates to Jakarta. We'll see if they pull that one off. And it looks like finally the Wagi will take a city in the next few turns, making some progress here in this siege. There is an artillery here. I don't think that's actually contributing, but if it gets closer, that might break down those walls a bit quicker. There is only one, oh, people. The influential. It is just Brunei, up to eight. No one else influential at all. Of course, we saw Brunei with like three to four times as much tourism as everyone else. So that's probably having a pretty big influence on that one. And why no one else? I don't think anyone else has like double. Or the most you might see is someone in second, the sieve in second, doubling someone near the bottom. But that's about it. Another Manhattan project, this time in Singapore. It looking, yeah, it does look like Banuba could go on the offensive here against the Murray. They do have some troops to defend themselves, so hopefully that will work out. It's, it's going to be an interesting mix. You've got mostly infantry here with a few artilleries up against a load of cavalry and artillery. So, interesting little combat mix. Australia showing up as well. May just buy the Murray some breathing space by distracting Banuba in the east. Did these guys survive? That's all that matters to me. Anangu, yep, they, they pulled it off. It's good to see. There's still a lot of settlers just lurking around the map, looking for good spots. There's a lot of resources on the table if you are willing to settle in the desert and have the happiness probably spare to do so. You'll see a lot of oil, uranium, a lot of luxuries, copper, silver here, uh, some cotton this way, quite a lot here, incense, gems, there's, there's, there's a bit of everything. Australia. Gets quite a few resources out of this city. New South Wales gets some as well, and probably more in the future. So if you find the right spots, there's still plenty of value out there. And here we go, Banuba's troops, their first wave of cavalry, arriving in the Murray borders for the first time. Burma, now with the Manhattan Project, that will probably deter Lao 
from invading if they were to build one, but of course they are lacking. I don't see any green glow here, no no uranium, they would have to find someone to sell them. And in fact, Lao does not have it either, so actually they might do, do they have any over here? No, it doesn't look like Lao has uranium, but Vietnam does, which could be an advantage. But again, we've not seen that war yet between Vietnam and Lao. Both interested maybe more in there. <laughs> adding territories elsewhere as we've seen this land did completely fill it seems like by the snaky look of this Vietnam seemed to have got the most I think it's probably because they had less sea tiles to gain well not less but they had less of a border with the sea whereas Lao obviously along this long bit were getting loads of tiles Vietnam would only get maybe one two early on and meanwhile the AI prefers to sort of grow inland first I don't know that for sure, but I mean, if you look at it, they have a lot less. I mean, here's different, but because it's not coastal. But look, Vietnam has a city here, but they've grown then much further this way from this city than this way. Probably makes sense somehow. I'm sure you get what I mean. There is evidence here that suggests if there's a choice between a land and a sea tile without a resource, they'll pick the land tile. Hence why we don't just see massive borders in the sea too early anyway. Maybe later on we will. A lot of, I keep forgetting, New South Wales with a lot of different Pacific islands to manage, including this one, which is even itself got quite a big population now as an island. But they're just very calm. They're not worried about Banuba anymore, I don't think. So I think the coalition, the only thing it's really maybe done is sort of slowed Banuba down, which definitely has played into New South Wales' hand because they've just been spamming settlers the whole time anyway. So that's worked out for them. Banuba piecing out with Indonesia. Oof. Uh, well, looks like Jakarta was safe anyway. As the Maori complete the Manhattan Project. And Banuba, yep, their first wave repelled by the Murray. So there we go, that's good news for the Murray. Maybe Australia, as I said, maybe distracting them too. Another Banuba settler here. This would be a good island. You're going to get copper. And two sources of spices, some fish. Yep, that would be another good bit of territory to take. And again, I mean, you don't want another sieve settling here and then putting like nukes or something within your territory. I mean, there's already one there from the Wagi just being hidden. I guess that's maybe being hidden from Motu, making sure they don't lose it by accident. I mean, they have another one just here. Banuba also pieces out with Igorot. Maybe we're going to see Banuba get some peace deals, which will be worrying for the sieves that don't get one, because it means obviously more and more forces and resources dedicated to them. Igorot battleship there. Um, and here we go. It does look like we're going to get a city to go. That's good news, you know. I mean, it's not good when we get an episode without one. It looks like they'll peace out now. Just, just wait. <laughs> it does look like the walkie. We'll make some process, and you never know. Once you start to take one city, maybe a second, that's, you can snowball pretty quickly, and that could happen here. I mean, Motu will have pretty much no chance to get this back because of it being you know, the wrong side of the mountain range, really. Surprise Motu. I guess they don't really have many boats. Make, could have made more of an effort to attack this city. It's almost, you know, these two flipping over would make the borders look a bit more normal, or, you know, it would look kind of more natural than what it is at the moment with this weird interlocking and separated bit but of course it's not really a fair swap for Wagi so I'm sure they'll try to avoid that happening New South Wales another settler out here in the Pacific did anyone go up here yet I think it was devs so small you probably wouldn't see on the minimap no nope. some damage in the ocean there maybe one of the AIs has got an invisible unit we don't know about Brunei has now completed the Pentagon they have some jet fighters, which is very advanced to protect themselves. And here you have, um, they are trying to get this Banuba city, it's not really working. They, this, do you not have oil? Like, No, they do. Okay, I was going to say, it's just, yeah, they have loads of oil. Okay. Just, and a lot of uranium. <laughs> a lot of uranium. But, um, they're obviously just, they're just happy. They're, they're not worried about taking over the world as aggressively as some of the other sieves they seem pretty comfortable. They've obviously appeared to have a good tech lead. I, I don't know what it's at at the moment. I haven't looked for a while. 
we know they were in the lead, but by how much? Yeah, they got a five tech cushion to the next two best sieves, and then about ten to the others, particularly New South Wales is ten behind them. And Banuba's not even on this page. Yeah, Banuba's on 58. Even sieves like, um, I mean, Aceh's on 66. So yeah, Banuba, that's going to hurt them. And it might even hurt New South Wales in the results, which I think we'll do at turn 300, because by then Brunei will be on turn at uh, turn tech 80 so that seems like a fair point and obviously as i pick them that seems fair <laughs> it's like the closest we're going to get obviously yes if we go on for ages new south wales probably wins by size but we will again as usual once we hit that point we'll i'll, I'll let it run for as long as it will go before the three strikes and you're out in terms of crashes But yeah, I think 300 is when we'll do the info addicts based results because we'll have a sieve at the top end of the tech tree and that's normally the fairest point to do it. But that'll just be for the shout out, you know. Baruni, there it is, finally. Oh, new cities here from Lao. Were they always there? Or they must have been four and three population. Must have been there for this episode and there it is. Wagi, take a city off Mogu. Uh, Mogu? Motu. <laughs> Getting their names combined there. Um, but that is, it's a small relative growth. You know, Motu, slightly worse now. Wagi, slightly better. In terms of their island, that could mean quite a lot over time. All the other cities now, kind of the major ones. We'll see if they're tempted. They haven't yet been tempted to use use those things. The, the nice little atomic bombs. This one's actually, a bit, oh no, it's gone now. Oh, it's over here. They're keeping both of them very well hidden or maybe they're about to use them on Banuba or something who knows that could also be possible I haven't really looked at oh my goodness Nagarin Jerry has a very advanced and big army how big is it in numbers boats obviously are going to make this very deceiving but yeah they had number two Australia's down at seventh I'd be worried if I was Australia New South Wales and Nagarin Jerry could team up on you and then they'd outnumber you sort of three to one that would be pretty rough although that is again not entirely accurate it is from the numbers but Australia the other two sieves have a lot more boats Australia only have a few boats and one coastal city so on the actual land Australia would probably put up a much better defense that said <laughs> they are very much prepared for an air attack they have a lot of anti-air guns but not much of anything else <laughs> so they're very trusting of their neighbors not to come by land Let's have a look at religions. We haven't done that for a while. I was supposed to. I remembered it last time. I was like, we'll do it next time. Okay, well, there you go. Shinto from New South Wales in 48 cities. Pretty clear-cut leader at the moment. Some other medium popularity ones. Brunei's religion of Islam has now spread to 27 cities. Anangu Judaism is in 22 as well. They're not even around as a sieve anymore. The Khmer managed to spread Buddhism to 18, and they're not around. Well, they are around, but they're now in a completely different part of the map. But there's no other religions in Southeast Asia, so that sort of helps them. And then the Muri in 17 with Catholicism. And then the other two, just sort of dead or dying. Indonesia's not doing too well. It's not really left their territory. Another Banuba settler towards Brunei. I'm surprised that it will even find somewhere. These submarines may come over and pick that unit off and I think New South Wales might come and pick it off as well so it's done quite well to get through all of this I guess this is kind of Banuban territory in terms of the ocean oh there's a long Yongu unit they're still around too those I didn't realize there's people in this boat they've got very flat and square feet <laughs> but you know, they're, they're giant they just it's funny it's always like you know a cargo ship and they're just these giant people World religion, Buddhism. Well, that will not pass unless there's some weird amount of votes. But you can see most civs have six or four votes, so that should not happen. Embargoing of Banuba. I mean, the Maori have already been cast off. The freedom civ in the corner, completely isolated. But yeah, Banuba. That would really hurt them if they were to be cut off, I think, from international trade. I don't know what their economy is exactly looking like. Uh, it's second largest in terms of income. Net gold, they're actually number one at 773, but 
big butt. Uh, how do you have 11 trade routes? I don't know. They have 7 trade routes. If they were to lose them, let's say they're all cargo ships, given 30 gold per turn. 210. Okay, they'd still be making like 550. So <laughs> a turn. Like, that's not bad at all. Don't think they need to worry too much. They are. They're raking it in. Never mind. They probably have a lot of spare resources to trade. They're pretty huge. Um, same goes for New South Wales. They're probably trading away a lot of spare copies. But that'll be it for this episode. So as always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.